Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tech TLDR. Today, we're going to be talking about the SN15's upcoming rollout, what Elon Musk is tweeting about the SN11's failures, the flaws that they found, and the improvements that they are making. We're also going to be talking about other SpaceX and space-related news regarding the Crew Dragon leaving the ISS and Ingenuity's touchdown on Mars. So if you want to know everything, be sure to stick through the whole episode. Drop a like on the video to stay on this side of the YouTube algorithm, but let's get into why you clicked on the video. So first up, Mary from Boca Chica had tweeted this photo of the SN15. SpaceX, the crew there working on the SN15. The nose cone was recently attached. They are getting this ready to roll out to the pad. Tankzilla, which is the crane that actually moves these starships around, that has been moved to the launch facility itself. And if we actually look at Lab Padre's uh, stream earlier, this comes from Everything SpaceX. He had tweeted a photo from Lab Padre's stream. The Tankzilla had arrived in the launch site for SN15's rollout. Now, unfortunately, we have if we look at Cameron County's area, we can see here that they did have the clearance for the road from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m., but by now that closure is over in the Texas area, so they no longer are going to be able to move the Starship today. However, I wouldn't be surprised if by tomorrow, Tuesday, April 6th, we see the Starship, the SN15, roll to the launch pad and get ready for a static fire, first a cryo, then a static fire test. Now, just talking about Starships in general, we can see here this tweet comes from Brendan Lewis on Twitter, this iteration, if you will, of the Starships and kind of where they're at in their builds right now in the prototypes. You can see SN15, it's just about ready to go out. SN16 and 17 and 18, actually, all have quite a bit of their structure already uh, assembled and just put together. SN19 and 20, those are still way out in the distance, a lot of work to be done. We also look at the boosters. The first booster, which we talked about in a previous episode, that is done and it's going to be scrapped though. It was just to understand its manufacturing process and its moving process. The BM2, however, is hopefully, as Elon Musk had tweeted, will be putting Raptor engines on board, possibly orbital ready. So there's a lot more going on with that. They've yet to really start building that. They're going to break down the BN1 first. Now, regarding Elon Musk's tweets about the SN11 and its failures, everything SpaceX had tweeted at him asking about the investigation of the SN11 and if SpaceX had concluded what went wrong. And Elon Musk did confirm that, yes, they found that there's actually a small CX4, which is methane. There was a small methane leak, and it led to a fire on one of the Raptor engines where it fried the avionics, and because of that, it caused a hard start attempting a landing burn and this methane turbo pump. So they're working on this. It's great that they actually found the problem to that. I know if you watched the video of this, the videos were awful. Nobody could get a stream because it was so foggy. And SpaceX's own cameras, as they were doing this SN11 launch and landing, they all they stopped. They they froze up, and there was there's just no good footage of what happened. We could only see inside the engine bay, and we did see where that fire started on that engine but that was really all we saw we never saw any sort of actual crash we just heard a big boom so it's great though that we do have confirmation about what went wrong with the sn11 and that the ascents the transitions the belly flop everything like that did go as they were supposed to it was just it was again it was the landing phase it was the final phase and because a part of it had been fried from the fire from the methane leak and again these new starships with sn15 and beyond they're getting an upgraded raptor engine so with an upgraded Raptor engine, there's a lot less going on mechanically, a lot less things to go wrong, and a much smaller chance of these fires happening and causing any damage that would happen and result in another catastrophe like this. I wouldn't say catastrophe. Another uh, rud, another test subject gone down with the rest of the starships. Now, earlier today, the Dragon capsule that was actually docked aboard the ISS, it left and repro uh, positions itself relocated to a different part of the ISS, making room for the Crew Dragon 2. It's going to be happening in a few weeks. And the CRS-22 Dragon, which will be in the summer, that tweet comes from SpaceX directly themselves. This is the first time a commercial um, capsule, if you will, has actually repositioned itself on the ISS. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's an odd feat, but interesting nevertheless. And big happy news coming from NASA, JPL. The Mars helicopter, which we all know as the Ingenuity, which was aboard the NASA Perseverance, which landed earlier this year, it has finally left the Perseverance. It touched down on the Martian surface for itself. And within the coming week, we may see this thing actually do its very first test flight, which would be the first man-made object, maybe the first object ever. Who knows what used to be there before? First human object that will fly on the Martian atmosphere to test what it is like 
can we actually fly something within this atmosphere? All we've done is pretty much crash land objects onto the um, Martian surface. We've never propelled anything off of the surface, and this is going to lead a lot of insight as to what we can expect going into the future of exploring Mars, the atmosphere, and what we can learn from it. That's all I have for you guys today in this episode. If you enjoyed the content, if you want more of it, be sure to drop a like and a comment and subscribe to the channel. It's free, and if you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. Be sure to have a good one.